cannot come to the presence of God with fear. Forget about your worries, forget about what you are passing through. We have come here with one voice to appreciate God for what he has done for us and for bringing us this far.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this month's theme is I Am a Solution, but for to this evening, we shall be on Be the Solution. And we'll be taking our Bible verse from Daniel 5, verse 11. Very interesting verse, I must say. Um, and it goes that there is a man in the kingdom in whom is the spirit of the Holy God. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of God was found in him, whom the king of Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father made master of the magicians, the astrologers, the Chidians, and, and all. And if we think about it, we, we ask ourselves sometimes, can we be this? the solution? And the answer is yes. And even though we can see it in Daniel 5, it still happens till today. Because we've seen people that are, were professors in universities that were called to be ministers, even in Nigeria. We've also seen people that, we've heard the story of a lady that makes a uh, moin moin that was invited to the White House. So why can't we be the solution? We definitely can be the solution and it's important for us to be the solution and we'll go and the next question will be then how do I become the solution my first point will be we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit Ephesians 5 verse 18 says and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit and why is that important? It's extremely important. People might say, well, I have been successful. I don't need the Holy Spirit. But the truth is, to be filled with the Holy Spirit is being able to do beyond what you can capable do. We've always watched movies where we would see, maybe in a war situation, where they would tell you, oh, you, you can only see between here and that door that we are facing. But someone else is flying and seeing miles away. Or from here in Lekki, we can see Ikeja. And they are giving him advice that, oh, there are four people there. There are two people here. And that's the, the same thing with the Holy Spirit. Why can we not use the advantage that God has given us? And it's a free gift from God to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because those are the things that you need that constant communication with you know, with the Holy Spirit to give you that guidance. This is what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. This is what you, where you need to go. This is when you need to be quiet. This is when you need to speak up. When you have that constant conversation with God and with the Holy Spirit, you just cannot go wrong. And so I would say that one of the things to be the solution is really about being spirit-filled with the Holy Ghost, being spirit-filled with what is right to allow you do those things that your bodily abilities has a limitation. And that's why you see people say that, oh, I could never in my wildest dream have thought that I would be able to achieve this. Or I could never in my wildest dream think that I'll be able to talk to this um, crowd. But here you are, you are doing these things. Not because of your power, but because of the power that is within you, the, the God of gods, the King of kings that is living within you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The next thing is being filled with the words of God that provides wisdom and understanding. It is extremely important that we constantly fill ourselves with the word of God because that is what continues to encourage us in everything that we do. There are times that the world just pushes us down. There are times that the world makes us think that you cannot do this. You cannot achieve this. It's beyond you. But the word of God will constantly remind us of those positive things that make you become rather than a a problem maker to being a solution person, to finding solutions in people. When we go to James 1 verse 5, he said, but if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives all generously and without reproach and it will be given unto him. It is clear. 
He has said it. If you feel you lack wisdom, then ask God. It doesn't take a lot for us to kneel on our, uh, uh, to kneel down and pray and say, God, I lack this wisdom. I do not know how I will approach this week that we are, we are getting into. Oh, Lord, give me that wisdom. And he will give generously. And it even has without reproach. Without any uh, side effects, negative side effects, he will give you freely. And so those are the things that we need to dwell on. That's James 1 verse 5. Then if you go to Philippians 4 verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. It is very important. Be anxious for nothing. Because the devil himself makes us anxious. How? Ah, how will I do this? How will I go there? Well, I don't have that confidence. I can't speak in a crowd. I, can't, I don't know the, the things I need to say. But he says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer, by supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. If you do that, you can't go wrong. If you do that, you can't go wrong. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And he also says in Psalm 119, verse 105, that your word is like a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And that's what we've been saying, that you have to be filled with the word of God. And he has, this is a confirmation of what we just said earlier. That in Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, Your word is like a lamp to my feet. Of course, when you have a lamp, you're able to see what is in front of you. If there is a stone, you're able to say, Ah, let me move to the right or let me move to the right, to the left. And it's like a light to my path. If, you, if we understand how paths are, our human path, sometimes it might not be straight. Sometimes you need to go right. Sometimes you need to go left. But it's like when you have a light, you know, guiding that path, you can't make mistakes. And that is why the word of God is extremely important. A lot of us might feel that, well, it has been there for thousands of years. It does not apply to this world. But it does. And I gave the example. We read the Daniel 5.11 where someone was handpicked and someone said, tell your story. And my prayer this evening is that me, the Lord will allow people to tell our own story. That this man, Mr. Femi Alabi, he is known for this thing. Let us invite him. And that is what is important. Let us start being the solution. A lot of the things of this world allows us to worry worry that how would we do this how would we do that but rather than focus on those things that get us down let us focus on the word of god let us constantly communicate with the holy spirit that would continue to guide us and continue to encourage us it is so important now i'll go to proverbs 5 proverbs 3 5 to 6 verse 5 to 6 that is my personal favorite i use it all the time and it has helped me across my own path and it will continue to help me which is trust the trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path it's so instructive Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What does that mean? Not to say you are trusting 40%. Not to say you are trusting 50%. Trusting absolutely. And what does it also say? It said, lean not on your own understanding. We've been trained that we can only take one step at a time. We've been trained that you, can, you have to crawl before you walk. You have to walk before you run. But what he's saying is that there's even something beyond that. Do not allow your understanding to limit your growth there are times i say ah i can't move from here i must move from two to three but nothing stops you from moving from three to eight from eight to 14 from 14 to 24. and that is what is so instructed that lean not on your own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him 
And what does that mean? That's also very, very instructive. Acknowledge him when things are good. Acknowledge him when things are low. Acknowledge him when you are extremely excited. Acknowledge him when you are so down and low. And just say that, oh Lord, it is you. In my high, it is you. In my low, it is you. And in our way, he has said it. I will. He didn't say, I might. He didn't say, I probably. Or maybe if you are, I'm in a good mood. No. He said, I will direct your path. And that is what we are all craving for. That's what we are all asking for. That, oh Lord, direct our path. Let us not uh, go into a path of destruction. Let us not go into a path that might be deceptive, that might look good in the, in the superficial, but really it leads to destruction. Let our path be straight. Let our path end up in victory. Let our path end up in promotion. Let our paths end up in, in, in situations that we will be happy for. Let our paths be the one that will be of impact. Let us, our paths be that we are the solution providers. I'll pause for a minute and say, even in the business world, you will see all those that are very successful entrepreneurs, they never started, when you ask all of them, they never started by saying, oh, I wanted to be a billionaire or I wanted to be a millionaire. They started with identifying a problem. And they were so keen on finding solutions to that problem. Across board, you could be a teacher. A teacher is one that just wants to teach his student to excel in their area of studies. It could be, it could be a doctor. A doctor wants to heal his patients. It could be a lawyer. A lawyer wants to make sure that his, his client is vindicated if he's being accused. He's just finding a solution. And that is what this, today's theme is about. Being that, being a solution. Looking more or less day and night seeking for problems or situations and asking yourself, how can I, Olufemi, Olukarade Alabi, be a solution to this potential problem? You know, how can I solve this problem? How can I remove, you know, tears from, from someone and make it joy with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the help of God? You know, because when, you've, when we think about it, the world has so much pressure on things, on certainties, of things of unknowns. Oh, how will I deal with tomorrow? Oh, how will I deal with today? I don't have food to eat. I don't have a job. You know, but rather than focus on those things, let us, you know, have a mindset of change that even regardless of all those things, let me be a solution provider. Let me be a solution provider. Let me start thinking differently. Start looking at things that are not going well, not as a disadvantage, but actually as an advantage. Because for every, for every problem, there are, there are one or two multiple uh, solutions. So why can't we be that solution provider? As I said, it's important when we rely on the word of God to guide us and direct us and in our moments of weakness to even strengthen us in Jesus' mighty name. I will continue by saying um, in First Thessalonians 5 verse 18, it says, in everything, give thanks. This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I will repeat again. In everything, give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We said it before. Give thanks in the morning. Give thanks at noon time. We don't have to wait for Thanksgiving Sunday to say we are giving thanks. We don't have to wait for Easter Sunday to say we are giving thanks. We don't have to wait for Christmas Day to say we are giving thanks. We don't also have to wait for a New Year's Eve Day to say we are giving thanks. Give thanks. In everything, give thanks. When things are looking so down, depressed, give thanks. Because it's, it's an acknowledgement of the faith you have in God, of who your father is, that regardless, because think about it, when you ask those things, or when you don't, it does not remove who God is in your life. 
He does not. He doesn't become a lesser God or he doesn't become more powerful. He is still God. So in everything, acknowledge him and say that, oh Lord, I might be down now. I might not have the things I need, but I will give thanks. And when he has provided those things that you were lacking, also give thanks. Do not fail to give thanks. It's acknowledgement that he is still God in our life, regardless of where we find ourselves. And that is why I said these words we will keep reminding ourselves the need for it day and night. As I said, first Thessalonians, in everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. And I will also go with one of the, there are many verses in the Bible, many multiple, but I just felt that let us have five or six to encourage us to be solution providers, to be solutions and say, I might not be where I want to be. Sometimes we always feel that, or oh, I need to get my own before I be of a solution provider to the next person. No, that's not the case. You might not have what you need now, but it does not limit you to be a helper to somebody else. So yes, you might say, oh, I need one million now. But what, meanwhile, you have maybe 200,000. It does not mean you cannot help someone else. It does not mean that, oh, I must make the 1 million plus X before I can now give the X uh, to be someone's help. You can be the provider. Remove finance. One might say, oh, I need this thing. But you have, you have, you, you've studied, you have experience in businesses, you can be, you know, the help to those and solution providers to those that are coming up. You know, you've been there, you've done four years, five years, seven years, 15 years of experience. You've gained something. You have something. So let's not allow the devil to walk in us and say, I cannot, I don't have it. But what it is that God has put all of these gifts in every single one of us, there's always something to give. There's always something you keep. So let us not allow the devil to lie to us to say that there's nothing. I have nothing left. No. For as long as we are alive, for as long as we are breathing, for as long as we are waking up, for as long as we can stand up, we have always something to give. Let us remember in our minds that we can be the solution. We can be our brother's keeper. And we can make sure that we can put smiles and glorify our Father who is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now let's go to one of the last Bible verse that I was talking about. The second point by being filled with the word of God that provides wisdom and understanding. And it is Romans 15 verse 13. Now the God of hope. Let me repeat. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. It's important and is very instructive. Now what does this mean? Now may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. And why is that important? That joy and peace are critical elements that we must constantly have day and night, that we must constantly guard ourselves and ensure we do not allow anyone to take it. The world will be surrounded with bad news, negative news, things that are not going well. In fact, the definition of news is bad. Almost like if it's good, then it's not really news. But if it's negative, if it's bad, that is when we hear it in the newspaper, or that is when, that's when we see it in the newspaper, or we hear it on the TV or on the radio. But what is important is that let us guard the joy and the peace that God has given us. Because those are the critical elements to be abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Very, very instructive. Meaning that there are things that might not come when we want it. Meaning that there are things that we are hoping for that is not coming at that right time. So we must guard the peace and joy God has given unto us to ensure no one takes it away. Because if you don't have peace in your heart, how can you have hope? If you don't have joy in your heart, how can we have hope? And that is what 
this Bible verse is saying, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. You also see the Holy Ghost coming in. We had said earlier that one needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And the reason for that is being able to do those things that our physical limitations cannot do. But being able to go beyond and above those things. Now the third is being filled with the fruit of the Spirit. Very, very important. We all know what the fruit of the Spirit is. I feel that to be a solution, to be the solution, you know, you need to be filled with the fruit of the Spirit, and which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. We can all find that in Galatians 5, verse 22. Why is that important? It's extremely important. We need to have love in our hearts to be able to be a solution provider because it's all about the next person. It's not about you per se. You know, you need to have love. We said this before in the Romans 15 verse 13 and you see coming out that what are also the fruit of the Spirit? Joy and peace. We read in Romans 15 verse 13 that says, Now the God of all will fill you with all joy and peace. We need to have those things, joy and peace, as well, part of the fruit of the Spirit. Long-suffering. Things will not always happen the way you want it to happen. Things might not go the way you want. But are you the type that will be, I can't wait. I'm very impatient. But we must have that long-suffering to say, regardless of that I've been praying for this, I've been working hard, I've been studying for this for a long time, but I'm not getting it. But we must have that long suffering to say we'll hang in there and the Lord will continue to strengthen us in everything, gentleness. People would even go out of their way to upset you, annoy you, to get a reaction. Ow! Man that doesn't know anything, that thinks he knows everything. You know, you will hear those comments. How do you react? Do you also flare up? And say, what do you mean by that? How can you talk to me? Do you know who I am? Those are the comments that some people would say. But that should not be comments coming from someone filled with the Holy Spirit. It shouldn't. It should be something of gentleness. You don't allow them to distract you. Because they know some things you do not know. So, for instance, some of them might feel that you are just about to get your victory. And they want to distract you from getting. They can see. Maybe you might not be able to see immediately. And they are like, if I frustrate him, if I upset him, he's going to overreact. And when he overreacts, I'm going to use that to make sure he does not get to where he needs to get to. And so that is why gentleness is extremely important. Gentleness and humility. It's extremely important for all of us. Goodness and faith is those things. So I will repeat, you must be able to possess the fruit of the Spirit. We said at the beginning, to be that solution, to be the solution, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we are saying not just only being filled with the Holy Spirit, you must demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit. And what are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Let us have those things. Let us remind ourselves in those things. It's very, very important. Then the other thing to be a solution provider is let us focus on solving the problem. Sometimes we get distracted on and being focused that ah, I'm only providing this solution because of the money that is coming. And if we even go back to Daniel 5, verse 16 to 17, Daniel 5, verse 16 to 17, we would see it there clearly. And it says, I have heard you that you can give interpretation and explain enigma. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be 
third ruler of the kingdom. These were all the promises of the king, you know, to Daniel. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gift be for yourself and give your reward to another. Yet I will read the writings to the king and make known to him the interpretation. He did not get distracted. He didn't. A lot of us will get distracted and say, oh, fantastic, please, king, just bring it, bring it, bring it. But he said, I will still give you the interpretation of the writing of the war. You can keep those things. But what is very instructive is that even those other things will come later. And I will finally end by saying this. That let us to be providers. Let us be excellent in whatever we decide we want to do. If you're a teacher, be the best teacher. If you're a doctor, be the very best doctor. If you're a gate man, be the very best gate man. If you are the technical team, be the very best technical team. Someone will sort you out and say, there is this person that knows this work and I want him to join this team. And you will be among kings. And our prayer today is that we will be among kings and we will be solution providers in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching today's episode of our special Digging Deep. For questioning on any of our Bible study topics, kindly send a message to 080 WhatsApp only or send a mail to RCCG Temple of God Parish at gmail.com. Welcome to the family of love. What a God ever sees. This is the pool of God. There's no church without you. That's the truth. Such an honor to our